used by the maharajas and spent an unforgettable evening on it now i am in jodhpur which for me is the one city that still preserves the essence of a fast vanishing royal rajputana you can do jodhpur as well any way you like but my way has one advantage you get to live with the maharaja in his palace Gat Singh the maharaja of Jodhpur still lives here it is his home but because it's so massive it's often been called the world's largest private residence Gat Singh has turned part of the palace into a luxury hotel The way it works is this Gat Singh and his immediate family occupy one wing the rest of us occupy another wing But the distinctions are not watertight Both wings share the same grounds. Many of the facilities are common. Perhaps because this is a functioning palace and not some monument to times long gone by, Umeesh Bhavan has a unique feel about it. You became a Maharaja when you were very young, right? Four. So you've been a maharaja nearly all of your life. <laughs> But unlike many maharajas, you really made the transition very gracefully. You've been a high commissioner, you've been a businessman, you've done many different things and you've done a huge job in promoting Jodhpur. Well, Jodhpur has always been my, uh, you know, life and I think uh, that was because I was came into what I did. Unfortunately, my father passed away, but uh the kind of conditioning I got from my mother, grandmother and all the older relatives Mm. uh was this sort of attachment to Jodhpur who you are what you are what you represent what is it like when you taking it turning your palace into a hotel you wander into the gardens there are unfamiliar people do you resent it at all or is it okay you know i mean you've seen this place i yeah. mean it's sometimes referred to as the jazz age palace it is and um, it has to be lived in and right. to live, and it has to has to work yeah. so the, you know, there has to be activity so really um, to, to be in it alone would have been very gloomy true Uh sometimes it's irritating but it's built in such a way that by and large uh one doesn't really so in the background and get our privacy here and we meet people when we want to mm. we don't we don't we don't uh, Jodhpur has become sort of center for the international jet set does it sort of surprise you how much Jodhpur has now become the place globally I don't surprise me because we've been working at it uh, for quite some time uh, to make Jodhpur a destination apart from the palace and I've always felt Jodhpur has a lot to offer in terms of because Jodhpur has a, a, still has a sense of itself. It's been a slice of old Rajputana in many ways and this is quite unspoiled. So th- those are the aspects we're trying to project. Yeah. And uh, people have begun begun to understand it and appreciate it. Those who get here. <laughs> yeah. But it's easier now than it used to be. The palace is also astonishing. It's not an ancient Rajput palace as you said. It's a jazz age palace. What was the idea behind the design because it's part chateau part country house part palace so as you know it was the last big palace built That's right. uh, in uh, before independence before independence my grandfather was in many ways uh, quite a frugal person in his own personal taste he enjoyed things like cigar and mm. flying and riding and, and nice cars and all that yeah uh, but he was quite happy where he was but the dictates of the time demanded a modern palace right finally he succumbed when there was this great famine Mm. in doubt and in the state exec uh at none of the funds for the famine relief projects so this became a, a project for providing labor providing work employment employment, employment. and it was employment driven that's why it took so long also to build how long did it take to build it, it started in 29 it finished in 43 my god really that long 14 years yeah. because gat singh worked so hard at keeping jodhpur seeming different there's never a shortage of things to do my visit coincided with a vintage car rally a polo game and a gala dinner at an ancient fort Let's 
The vintage car rally itself was fascinating, not for the race element, but for the cars themselves. Many of the cars belong to Gut Singh's family. His ancestors were great collectors of expensive cars. And it is actually rare to find vintage cars that are this well maintained anywhere else in India. The dinner at Mehrangarh Fort was made spectacular by the location. This is probably one of the world's largest forts. It sits on a hill high above Jodhpur and conveys an ambiance entirely of its own. Nothing very much has changed here for centuries and when the prizes for the vintage car rally were announced, I had the distinct sense of being transported back to the 1920s. Alas, this was not to be. I was press ganged into giving away the prizes, one of them to the Maharaja himself. And then I had to make a speech about Jodhpur. Yeah, hi, this is, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. This is my first visit to Jodhpur. To come here is to have your breath taken away. To live at Umed Bhavan, to come to this fort. This is a bit of Rajasthan that has advanced, has moved with the times, but it's moved with the times in a nice sort of way. Jodhpur is, I think, truly one of the world's great destinations. It's really an amazing home. And the credit for that, I think, goes to Bhakti. If you haven't been to Jodhpur yet, I think you should go. I don't know how long Gatsing can keep this up, but it is truly one of the world's most astounding destinations.